morning everybody it is worship wednesday today thanks for joining me and thank you for so many of you who responded after hearing my uh, <laughs> my challenge last week so many of you sent well wishes and prayers and i want you to know that your prayers are powerful and effective and I think you'll hear this week that they are beginning to avail much so thank you for your love and your concern these light and momentary trials these little afflictions you know when I consider uh, what my namesake the Rav Shaul the Apostle Paul went through um, beating to death. I mean, he was actually killed, came back to life. They broke the bones in his feet with steel rods so he couldn't walk from place to place. They threw him in jail, and I know that you know uh, jail in the time of the Apostle Paul, uh, there was no color TV. There were no private uh, little toilets and wash basins. There was no cafeteria. There was no uh, outside grounds where you go out and play football or soccer, you know, uh, to get a break. Uh, most of them were actually pits dug in the ground where you were tossed down into a pit with others. So if you broke your leg on the way down, it's too bad for you, but you deserved it. I mean, it's just, and yet that's where he did his best writing um, that was one of those places um, what is it Act 16 yeah that at midnight Paul and Silas are singing praises and hymns giving thanks to God at midnight and the sound of their voice caused such a response from heaven it was a sha'ag uh, I'm not sure if I've shared that with you on Worship Wednesday from Joel chapter 3. The Lord says, in times of trouble, I will thunder from Jerusalem and I will roar from Zion. That word roar, sha'ag, has two very different kinds of meanings. And as you might expect, the first meaning is roar like a lion that is attacking its prey. When they make that sound, the jungle goes quiet because that all the other animals know, at least for that moment, they're safe because the lion has found something to satisfy their hunger. But there's another meaning, um, just almost exactly opposite. It's, it's a cry of despair. And I asked the Lord one day, how, how can that be, Sha'ag, a lion who is taking over, overtaking its prey, making this sound that terrorizes the rest of the jungle? And it's a cry of despair. And, and I felt like the Lord just said, um, pretty simple, that when you cry out to me with a sound of despair, I respond with a roar that overtakes the one who is trying to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. I, I just love that. So put that away in your, in your little treasure chest of when you cry out, Abba, Father, uh, as Yeshua, as Jesus did from that execution stake, from that cross, heaven heard and responded, the earth shook and the, the sky went black as he gave up his spirit. They put his body in the ground and on the third day, there was another response from heaven. He rose from the dead and he ever sits at the right hand of the glory of God, making intercession for us Ooh, wow, I wonder what that sounds like. But there, there's a mystical side to heaven 
that I, I may share on, on another Worship Wednesday, actually where sounds are not only heard, but they're seen. And those things that we think are our actual physical realities take on another dimension. We, we see it with Yeshua after the resurrection, walking through walls, um, coming to speak to his disciples. And even though he can walk through a wall, he can sit on the seaside of Galilee and, and eat fish. And it doesn't, it doesn't just fall through the mist. There, there is a whole other dimension in the heavenlies. And, and we, in our praise, in our worship, can provoke that kind of presence in our lives that transcends, it's transcendental, transcends our normal experience. Heaven lives on a different dimension, a high, much higher dimension. And without getting too uh, weird and otherworldly, uh, we can experience that in some on this earth. I wonder, have you, have you ever experienced uh, the sounds of heaven? Maybe as you pray, maybe as you worship. Have you heard other sounds? Maybe as you're singing in your house or um, remember when we used to gather as large congregations and lift up our voices with the instruments and all this. I, I love that. Um, but there have been other times when I've heard uh, choirs that I couldn't see. Uh, I've heard other instruments that I, I that weren't there. It's happened even in Jerusalem a couple of times. Not weird, just cool. All right, so I want to share uh, a new song with you today. We have been writing uh, during these days where we have been quarantined and sequestered. Although, um, and although life has, has taken on a, a different rhythm uh, and a different pace, it's been amazing. It has been transformational in my home. Um, and, and you can find out more about that uh, at length if you become a world partner with us. And I'll share that in just a few minutes, we, we write and share these things with our partners every month, and I could do that every day. So many amazing things are happening. So um, I'm, I'm not really sure whether I've shared this new song with you on Worship Wednesday before uh, or not, but I, I feel like I want to share it again if I if I have. So Psalm 91 is a, one of those mainstay psalms, huh? uh, one that we all go back to over and over. In fact, I'm just reminded this, this ring that I have on my finger has Psalm 91 inscribed on the inside. Uh, it was, this was given to me, designed and given to me by my younger son, Joel, who lives out in Los Angeles with his wife, Shay, uh, and our newest grandson, Shiloh. But um, when he got married, 12, 13, whatever, how many years ago it was, I gave him my wedding band. And that's the, the white gold in the middle. When he turned 13, Instead of a bar mitzvah, we were already we were serving on a church staff in Chicago in those days. I, I gave him a promise ring, and he made a promise to walk with integrity and purity before the Lord um, till the day of his marriage. So uh, he used my wedding band to, to be married, and then after the wedding, I don't know if it was a year later somewhere, he designed this ring. He took those two combine them into this. It, it looks like they're connected with, with rods through uh, beautiful design. And then he inscribed 
Psalm 91 on the inside. And uh, even though he lives more than 3,000 miles away, giving a shout out to my son Joel today. Yoel in Hebrew, Jehovah is God, which need, needs to take me to this new song, Jehovah is here. So, and I, I may have to flip up the my little cheat sheet here. So thanks for your grace for today. Though the earth will shake and oceans roar Though the nations rage and kingdoms war Your voice is like thunder when you speak your presence today, that even though mountains may crumble, our hope will not fade. And as Psalm 91 says, which I never got to, though a thousand may fall at one side and 10,000 at another, it will not come near my tent. We see time and time again in the scriptures 
that even when plagues came and pestilence and disease, especially during the Exodus, yeah, that there was a Goshen, there is a place that has been separated and secured, and the name of the Lord is a strong tower against the forces of the enemy. The name of the Lord is, is like a wall, like a, a rampart, uh, I believe the psalmist says at one point. The name of the Lord is a strong tower of safety. Those who run into his name are safe. So today, as we sing, as we declare, he inhabits those praises. He builds a wall around you today. And um, <laughs> how does he do it? Uh, he sings over us psalms of deliverance. And as he sings over us, those sounds create a, a, a wall that is impenetrable. His voice cannot be transgressed by the power of the enemy. It has no authority. When he speaks, the sound of his voice goes out as waves. They, they are actually physical. Actually, the sound of his voice created everything that we call real. How's that for a thought? And so just as real as, as the creation is, so is that wall of protection. When you sing, when you call on his name, when you sha'ag, he speaks over you, he roars over you, and it creates that barrier, the walls like the walls around Jerusalem, and the enemy cannot penetrate. <sighs> yeah. So wherever you're at today, whatever you are experiencing, again, whether you are looking for some refreshment in the valley or you're dancing on the mountaintops, the sound of his voice is a shelter, a shield for you. So spend some time today and, and listen, tune your ears and listen for the sound of his voice. That's the assurance. I, I love this second verse that we wrote uh, weeks ago. We will call your name, O Most High, and remember you when arrows fly. You shatter the spear and you break the bow <laughs> of the enemy. And we will trust in you and you alone. So let's covenant today together, you and me, that we are putting our trust in the Lord. He's the one who is our tower of safety, our refuge. And while he hides us in the shelter of the shadow of his wings, there we are back in Psalm 91 again, he feeds us there. He provides. He's a good, good father. It's not just a good song. Hallelujah. Well, um, I've been telling you for a couple of months about our new Selah recording instrumental and right today you're seeing for the very first time our newest release, Roar from Zion. This is a, another new instrumental that we are giving to anyone who becomes a new world partner with us today and for the next couple of weeks. You can't buy this one. This one is a gift we want to give you. Uh, while we're sequestered here and unable to travel the nations as we normally do, although just a couple days ago, this past Sunday, I did a service right here from my, from my office in my home all the way to Colombia, South America in Spanish. It was, we had a, a great time. But you partners, those of you who have joined us as world partners have been sustaining 
and such encouragement to us. If you'll just join us, normally we say for a year, but if you'll just join us for six months and, and, and encourage us over this hump as the, the, the states open up and the nations open up and the auditoriums open back up and we're able to get out and change the way the world worships, if you'll join us as a world partner just for six months, we'll send you this brand new instrumental recording Be Elohim, forever, amen, endless, even so. Oh, we praise, your love is far better. Those are the new instrumentals that you'll hear on this project. And Selah is available, of course. Uh, if you go to any of the digital downloads, I, I, I almost said IHOP, iTunes, uh, or your favorite digital download. Now, if you join us this week as a world partner, a new world partner will send you both of these as a thank you for joining us. And I don't have it with me, but our our most recent full length recording, Roar from Zion, uh, that we captured live in Jerusalem during uh, the Feast of Tabernacles a year and a half ago, uh, is available as well. Wonderful stuff, even if I have to say so myself. But all of that's available to you. Well, we'd love to have you um, pick these up uh, digital or join us as a world partner and we'll send them to you as our welcome and our gift to say thank you for joining us. How can you do that? The description here on this page, if you click on that, that will take you to the links that you need to join us to purchase the CDs or to join us as a world partner. Um, and don't forget, we have a new app. Um, I guess it's not that new anymore. We've had it for four or five months, maybe. And if you go to the App Store and type in Wilbur Ministries, our new app is there. All of our media is there, music and teaching and all that stuff's available. Or wilburministries.com, where our books and CDs and all that stuff is as well. So I pray that these are a blessing to you, our Worship Wednesday. This new song, uh, Jehovah is Here, will be on a, a brand new recording that we're working on right now in Nashville, Tennessee. We actually have two in process, two new CDs, and uh, the beat goes on. I just wrote a new song with a new friend, um, yesterday or two days ago. Two new songs last week. I'll be sharing them with you here on Worship Wednesday, so be sure and join us. Uh, I don't want to bore you by going on and on and on. Join us this Friday at 6 p.m. for Shabbat in your home. And, uh, and then we also have Motivational Monday with my dear friend, Pastor Brian Schwartz from here in Jacksonville, Florida. And we have plans for more. There's always more. So thank you for praying. As you can hear, uh, I'm, I'm on the mend. And I appreciate your prayers and, and your support so much. Thanks for joining me today on Worship Wednesday. Lots of love and shalom from our home to yours, wherever you might be. Dios te bendiga in America Latina. Deus te abençoe in Brazil, and for the rest of us uh, mono-speaking English speakers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace today and every day. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah and our King. Shalom.